Okay, after completing both sections of the collar, I've gone to my local craft store and I've purchased some very spring-like buttons. You can, you know, take whatever you prefer to use for these. You're going to need four. And I'm going to sew them to the edge carefully, lining them up right there on the on the um, cable stitch on both of these. And I'm going to be sewing them with the, the color that actually matches the green. Um, you know, do whatever you'd like here, depending on what buttons you get. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and sew these on with my needle and thread, and then I'll show you from there what I have. Okay, I have just completed sewing on these buttons to both sides, and you can go ahead and put the buttons through the buttonholes. Also make sure the buttons that you choose are not too big or too small. They want to be able to go through this space and it's going to vary in size depending on whether you're making the child size or the adult size. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now technically the buttons can hold this collar together but I'm going to recommend you go ahead and we're going to stitch, make a little stitch or I guess what you call a dart right here. I'm going to show you how to do this. doesn't have to even show, but just you want it to stitch together and it's going to hold these loose ends, hold them together. Okay, so just do this a couple of times. This is you know, mostly for aesthetics, you know, just to... Hold those ends down. I'm going to do it one more time. And notice I'm using the same color thread as the yarn so that we're not drawing attention to this. And then I'm going to go ahead and knot this. So I'll go ahead and finish this up. Do that one more time just so it doesn't come undone. Just try that. And run it underneath our work, and then I'm going to give it a clip. as close to the work as possible, but without hurting anything. There we go. So I've done one little dart there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do another one right down here where these ends are and then of course we're going to match that by doing it on both of the other sides right here and here so go ahead and do that and then we'll begin working on the body of the poncho and i promise you that part's going to go a lot faster than the collar will okay now i've sewn both of the buttons on i have both of the ends tacked like I showed you, it just makes it much more secure and it just gives it a better appearance. I should have also mentioned that I've gone ahead and I hid the loose strands that were hanging from both of them, uh, both of the sides. So I went ahead and got rid of those before I sewed them on so they wouldn't get in the way of the needles and such. All right, so now we're ready to start the body. Okay, now we're going to start on the lower poncho. And we're going to work along the bottom edge of the collar on the wider side. You can really join it anywhere you would like. I'm going to actually join it here because it's a similar color. It really doesn't matter. But I'm going to go ahead and join. And I'm going to single crochet in that first stitch where I joined. And then we're going to chain three. One, two, three. We're going to skip the next stitch, which is this stitch, and then we're going to single crochet in the next. Okay, chain three, one, two, three, skip the next stitch, single crochet in the next. And we're going to do this all the way around. One, two, three, skip the next stitch, and let's, let's not do that. There we go, single crochet. So let me show you what we're, what we're doing. We're just doing this all the way around. When we get 
all the way around and we're going to come back here and we are going to slip stitch into the first single crochet we should have a total of 68 chain three spaces you're going to want to make sure that you stop to check to verify how many you have and if you don't have 68 you're going to need to maybe slightly adjust at the join here and i'll show you how to do that okay as i worked around i did have to make one slight adjustment to make the 68 number come out i just had to to actually single crochet in the next single crochet just in one instance and i was able to get get my 68 um, 668 loops completed or chain three loops okay so when we get to the end we're just going to slip stitch to that very first single crochet just like so okay now we're ready to begin round two and in order to do that we're not going to chain we're actually going to slip stitch into that next chain space like this and then we're going to chain three one two three and then we're going to double crochet. Now this chain three does act as or serve as a double crochet for this round and for this pattern. Okay, after we do that, we're going to chain three, one, two, three. We're going to single crochet in the next in the next chain space, chain three space, which is this. Then we're going to chain three, one, two three and then we're going to work two double crochets in the next space one two and then we're going to repeat that around chain three single crochet in that next chain three space chain three again and two double crochets in the next space so this is that's that's going to be your repeat all the way around. Okay, at the end of round two, we worked a single crochet in that last chain three. That I'm going to chain three, and then I'm going to join with the slip stitch in the top of that chain three, which also serves as a double crochet. Now we're going to slip stitch in that next double crochet, and then we're going to work a slip stitch in the chain three space i'm going to chain one and then i'm going to single crochet in that space just like so chain three and this is what we're going to do all the way around we're just going to work a single crochet in that chain three space chain three single crochet in the next chain three space and we're going to do that all the way around the cape At the end of this round, you're just going to join to the top of that single crochet with a slip stitch. Now it has occurred to me that it's maybe a little confusing as to where the row begins and where the row ends. And if that's the case, please feel free to use a stitch marker um, in, in the first stitch of the round as you go around so that you know that this is the end because it'd be very easy to just crochet over this and then just keep doing the same loops okay that would not be a good thing to do so go ahead and i would encourage you go ahead and use a stitch marker so that you know where the beginning of the rows are okay now to begin round four we're going to work a slip stitch and a chain one and then a single crochet right there in that uh, chain three space this kind of minimizes you know the transition from one round to the next okay after we do that we're going to chain three one two three and we're going to work two double crochets in the next space then we're going to chain three one two three and we're going to work a single crochet in the next space so that is going to be our repeat all the way around chain three two double crochets worked right in that chain three space chain three and then a single crochet worked in that next space now you know you're doing it right if your single crochets are above the single crochets two rows below or two rounds below you have the double crochet and the double crochet 
Okay, so go ahead and work that all the way around. Okay, round four ends with me working two double crochets in that last chain three space, chain three, and then join with a slip stitch to that single crochet. Also just want you to notice that we're not turning at the end of the rounds, we're just continuing to go around and around. Okay, so now we're going to slip stitch into the next chain three. This is beginning round number five. I'm going to chain one and then single crochet in that place. Okay, after I do that, I'm going to chain three, one, two, three. I'm going to single crochet in that next chain three space and we're going to do that all the way around. This is pretty much the same as round two or very similar to chain three and single crochet in that next chain three space. Chain three, single crochet in the next chain three space and go ahead and do that all the way around for round five. And, and round five ends the same way by working a chain three and then a slip stitch in that first single crochet of the round. Okay, now we're to begin round number six. We're going to work a slip stitch, chain three, and we're going to work two double crochets into that same chain three space. Okay, so we're going to be increasing the number of double crochets on this round. Okay, after that we're going to chain three, we're going to single crochet in the next space, chain three, and we're going to work three double crochets in the next space. Whoops, let me, I guess I want to show you that. So I have three here, so we have two down here, but we have three for this round. So that's going to be your repeat. Okay, we're going to chain three, single crochet, chain three, and then we're going to work three double crochet working in these chain three spaces. Okay, so go ahead and do that all the way around. The last stitch you're going to have, you're going to be working a single crochet in that last chain three space. So go ahead and work that around and I'll show you the join. Okay, I've worked my last single crochet of this round in that chain three space. I'm going to chain three and I'm going to join to the top of that chain three, which is actually doubles as a double crochet. Okay, now we're going to make our way across these other double crochets using a slip stitch. So we're going to slip stitch in the next stitch, slip stitch in that next double crochet, and then slip stitch in that chain three space, chain one, double crochet, I'm sorry, single crochet, that's a single crochet in that chain three space, and this is the chain three and single crochet in that next chain three space, all the way around, chain three and single crochet in that next space, chain three and single crochet in the next chain three space. So go ahead and work that all the way around. Okay, just to be clear, this is row number seven that we're working on. Just want to make sure I stated that correctly. This is row seven, the chain three and single crochet in the chain three spaces. Okay, to end row seven, we chain three and single crochet in that first stitch of the round. Okay, we're going to slip stitch. We're going to um, begin row eight, I'm sorry, round eight with a slip stitch into that chain three space, chain one single crochet, chain three, and then we're going to work three double crochets into the next chain three space, chain three, and a single crochet in the next space. And that is going to be your repeat, chain three, and then three double crochets in the next chain three space, chain three, single crochet in the next space. So go ahead and do that all the way around. Round eight ends 
by working a slip stitch in that first single crochet. Now remember, need, if you need to use a stitch marker to know where that stitch is, feel free to do that. Okay, so now at this point, rounds 9 through 10 say to repeat rounds 5 through 7. Okay, rounds 5 through 7. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at these rounds. See, 1, see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so round 5 is the round with the single crochet and chain 3 worked in each chain three space. Row six is the one with the three double crochets and chain three and then single crochet. Round seven, I'm sorry, five, six, seven is another round of the single crochets. Okay, now we're ready to begin row number 12, which begins by working a slip stitch in that first chain three space, chain one, and a single crochet. And just, just to show you, you should know this by now, um, whenever you, if you're wondering whether to do single crochet or, or do the uh, double crochets, the single crochets are together and the, the uh, spaces, the chain three spaces with the double crochets are together. Okay, so for row number 12 now, we're gonna chain three after we make that single crochet and instead of three we're actually going to work four double crochets we're increasing here as we go one two three so we're going to work four double crochets chain three single crochet and the next chain three space chain three and work four double crochets in the next chain three space. So that is your repeat for round number four. So go ahead and do that all the way around. Row four ends the same way we've ended the other rows like this by working a slip stitch in that first single crochet of the round. Now we're going to begin row 13. We're gonna slip stitch into that next chain three space. After we do that, we're going to chain one and we're going to work a single crochet. Now this is what's going to be a little different about this round. Instead of chaining three, we're going to chain four. One, two, three, four, and then work a slip stitch. I'm sorry, a single crochet in that next chain three space. So we're going to be chaining four as we go around and then a single crochet in the next chain three space. Chain four, and single crochet in that next chain three space. So go ahead and work that all the way around using four chains. Okay, row 13 ends by joining with a slip stitch with that first stitch of the round. And beginning round 14, we're going to slip stitch into that first chain four space. And then we are going to chain three, one, two, three. And then we're gonna work three double crochets in that same chain four space. Okay, so that, that turning chain that we formed here serves as that fourth double crochet. So we're only gonna do three single, I'm three, sorry, three double crochets in this space here. Okay, after we do that, we're going to chain three and then we're gonna single crochet in that next chain four space going to get confusing here. Chain three and then we work four double crochets in the next space. I'm just going to call it the next chain space. Okay so just to be clear we're going to work three chains in between um, the single crochets and the double crochets just like we did down here on row number 12. Okay. So let's go ahead and we're going to do this all the way around. That would be chain three, single crochet in the next space, chain three, and four double crochets in that next chain space. Okay, so go ahead and work that all the way around. We're going to end round 14 by working a slip stitch in that 
top of the chain three. Now we're going to go ahead and go right into round 15. We're going to slip stitch our way into each double crochet across. Let uh, me get all the fibers through. There we go. And into that chain space. After we do that, we're going to chain one single crochet in that chain space, the same one, chain four, just like we did two rows uh, previous, and then single crochet in that next chain space, chain four, and single crochet in the next chain space, chain four, and single crochet in that next chain space. So we're going to do that all the way around. At the end of round 15, we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet of the round, just like we've been doing. And now we're ready to begin round 16. We're going to work a slip stitch, a chain one, and a single crochet in that chain space. And then we're going to chain three, and we're going to work four double crochets in the next chain space. Chain three and single crochet in the next chain space. Okay, just going to repeat that around chain three and then work four double crochets in that chain space. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that all the way around, chain three, single crochet, and just, just to remind you again, make sure that when you're working the single crochets that you see the line of, of the single crochets here, and when you're working your double crochets that you see that it's aligning with the double crochets. Okay, so go ahead and work that all the way around. At the end of round 16, we're just going to join with another slip stitch to the top of that first single crochet of the round. Okay, now for round 17, the instructions say to repeat round 13. So let's take a look at round 13. It says to slip stitch, chain one, and single crochet in the next chain space. Then we're going to chain four, single crochet in the next chain space, and we're going to do that all the way around. Chain four, and single crochet in that next chain space chain four and single crochet in that next chain space. So go ahead and do that all the way around. We end row 17 with another slip stitch to the first single crochet of the round. And now we go on to row number 18. We work a slip stitch, a chain one, actually a chain three in the same place as joining. And then we're going to work four more double crochets whoops let me try that one again so let me sh show you this again so we do chain three which serves as a double crochet and then we do four more double crochets so now we're bumping the number of double crochets this round up to five we're going to chain three single crochet in the next chain space, chain three, we're going to work five double crochets in the next chain space. Okay, I'll do that one more time, chain three, and we're going to single crochet the next chain space chain three, and we're going to work five double crochets in the next chain space. That's two, three, four, and five. Okay, so go ahead and work that all the way around. At the end of round 18, we're just going to join with the slip stitch and the top of that turning chain. And we're going to slip stitch in each stitch across, that is working through the tops 
of those double crochets and then we're going to slip stitch into that chain three space and this just like um, round 15 round 19 is a repeat of round 15 we're going to single crochet chain one single crochet chain four and then single crochet in the next chain space chain four and single crochet in the next chain space so let's go ahead and do that all the way around round 19 ends with a slip stitch in that first single crochet of the round and now we're ready to begin round 20 we're getting close to the end everybody we're going to do a slip stitch chain one and a single crochet in that very first chain space we're going to chain three we're going to work five double crochets in the next chain space get them through so that's five double crochets chain three single crochet in the next chain space chain three and you know the rest five double crochets in the next chain space so go ahead and work these all the way around and again just as a reminder make sure that as you're working these double crochets that you see a stack of double crochets and when you work your single crochets that you see the the single crochets we end row 20 with a chain three and then a slip stitch to the first single crochet of that round okay now we're ready to go on to round 21 which is a repeat of round 13 so we're going to do a slip stitch a chain and a single crochet in that next chain space chain four and single crochet in the next chain space we're going to do that all the way around so chain four and single crochet in the next chain space chain four and single crochet in that next space okay at the end of round 21 we're just going to join with the slip stitch like we've been doing and for the next two rounds rounds 22 and 23 we're going to go back and repeat rounds 18 and 19 which is pretty much what we've been doing so we're going to go ahead and slip stitch in the next chain space chain three and we're going to add four more double crochets to this because that turning chain uh, like we did back in um round nine i'm sorry 18 it counts as a double crochet okay then we're going to chain three single crochet in the next chain space chain three and then work those five double crochets okay so after we do that round um, we will join to the top of the chain here and then I'm going to go ahead and give you the next round is the assignment um, round 23 which is a repeat of round 19 which is using the single crochets and four chains in between so go ahead and complete those two rounds and then we'll work the last round together now that brings us to the end of round 23 I'm going to go ahead and end with a slip stitch to the first single crochet of the round now at this point we've completed all the rounds except for the last round for the children's size poncho if you're making the adult size you're going to need to go back and repeat rounds 20 through 23 so you're going to have four more rounds um, before you do the final round that i'm just about to show you now so if again if you're going to complete the adult poncho you need to go back and repeat rows or rounds 20 through 23 one more time okay now beginning the final round i'm going to make a slight adjustment from the pattern um, the pattern says to do um, what i'm going to do in this space in this space and i think that's incorrect so i'm just going to have you do a slip stitch in the next single crochet in the next chain three space a chain one and a single crochet and then in the next space we're going to work 
We're not going to do any chains. Notice that we're going to work four double crochet. Let's go ahead and do that. That's four. Then we're going to chain three. We're going to do a slip stitch in the top of that double crochet, just like that. That creates a little pico. And then we're going to do four more double crochet. Okay, so this is what we've made there. Okay, so after we do that, we're going to single crochet in the next chain space. Notice that I, I didn't add any chains in between the single crochets and in between the double crochets. So let's go ahead. I'll do that for you one more time. So in the next space, and these will be the spaces where you've already had the, um, the column of double crochets, we're going to work four double crochets, chain three, slip stitch by working in that top of that last double crochet and then four more double crochets. Okay, remember we're not chaining now. We're just going to do a single crochet in that next chain space. Okay, so go ahead and work that all the way around the bottom. Okay, now we've come to our last join and we are just going to join with a slip stitch to that first single crochet. Okay, the directions do say to join to the first double crochet, but you can join to the first single crochet and that would be fine. Let's give it a little loop, give it a tug. Now I'm gonna cut a nice long strand for hiding and just go ahead and pull that through just like so. And so we have completed our poncho. There's a better picture at the beginning of the video of this poncho, but um, now I want to show you one real quick thing on how to hide the loose threads that are left. Now you're going to have to kind of be careful with this that you hide the color underneath the appropriate color if you don't want those threads to show. So go ahead, thread that yarn needle. I'm going to hide the last stitch just by going down into the last area there. See, now that little knot is sufficiently hidden. And I'm actually going to run it under all of these stitches here. All eight of those double crochets, and that should be plenty of space to hide that so you don't see it any longer. Very carefully cut that thread, give it a little tug so it's um, hidden underneath those stitches. And that is how you can hide all any any remaining um, threads that you have. So just go ahead and make generous use of that yarn needle and it will be your friend for hiding these um, threads and you know, finishing this project up as quickly as possible. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed the Dubonnet Poncho. Um, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel. Just hit that little subscribe button and that way you won't miss any of the new videos that I'll be posting. God bless. Bye-bye.